Hello everyone and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports and the British and Irish Lions versus Springboks series will go to a third test. A sensational return performance from the Springboks beating the British and Irish Lions 27 points to 9 down in Cape Town. An electric performance from the world champions who in the second half despite going into the half time you know three points down came back and just brutalized the British and Irish Lions in the last sort of 20, 25 minutes. A sensational comeback from the world champions. They're still in this and we will have a third test. It all comes down to one more game. And what a match it was. Really, I don't think we can have really too many complaints about decisions, about referees. It was just a great, great test match. Um, before we break the, the, the game down, look at some of the stats stuff. Please do smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well if you are new. Um, but John, in terms of what happened, in terms of the way the game unfolded, it all started with an early penalty from the box as Andre Pollard made it 3-0 in the 5th minute. But the, the Lions hit back um, quite soon in the 10th minute, 3-3, before Dan Bigger took the lead um, for the Lions in the first time in the 17th minute. Andre Pollard then missed a kick. Didn't kick particularly well in the first half, even in the second half, but started coming back towards the end of Pollard. A big blow for the Springboks was Priestley at the toy leaving the field in the 22nd minute. And unfortunately, it looks like his tour could be, well, his, his series could be over. It looks like a bit of a shoulder injury there. So Kwaka Smith replaced him there. Duan van der was then Sinbin in the 23rd minute for kicking, well, tripping Cheson Colby. Basically, the ball was along the ground and, and Cheson Colby picked it up and, and, and Duan van der attempted apparently to play the ball. Ended up kicking Colby. But two minutes later, Colby himself got Sinbin for uh, taking out Ali, I mean, sorry, Conor Murray in the air. A lot of the UK media saying it should have been a red card, or a lot of UK fans rather. So basically, it was it was one of those, we went very high, Chesney Colby was after it. He had his eyes on the ball the entire time, but he never jumped. Conor Murray went very, very high, got his legs up quite high, and then Chesney Colby went underneath and took out his legs. So he kind of landed on his, his sort of arm and leg, and I think that was probably what saved the red card. But I think it's the right decision, you know. I don't think there was no any, any malice intent. I don't think that... Um, you know, I mean, Chesney Colby had his eyes on the ball the entire time. So I think a yellow card was pretty fair. Um, and then Andre Pollard leveled things in the 31st minute. Dan Bigger hit, um, hit back in the 36th minute, just after Joan van der Merwe had just come back onto the park. Um, so at half time, you know, six points to nine. I think the Springboks under a lot of pressure. They had to weather a bit of a storm. The British and Irish Lions were pretty faultless in, in the first half for the most part. You know, they didn't miss a single tackle. They had lots of territory. They had all the possession. Um, the second half, though, Makazoma Pimpy going over in the 45th minute. Brilliant stuff from him. Definitely a potential man of the match um, from him. But then Andre Pollard, so it's a great cross kick from Pollard to, to hit Mapimpi, but then missing the conversion. Dan Digger then missed a penalty after what I thought was a bit of a strange call. Um, Lyot Diago then replacing Jasper Visa, which saw Franco Moss the shift onto the flank. We then saw the entire British and Irish Lions bench come on in the 57th minute. The Spring Mocks re reply by bringing on Bidzikok and Malcolm Mox. Uh, Ali Price, Owen Farrell on in the 57th minute, and then Trevor Nyakani, take a bow, Trevor Nyakani, he came on in the 60th minute, and that was the turning uh, the turning point. The scrums became absolutely immense. Trevor Nyakani, I think, won two or three penalties um, since he came on. The Kanye on 61st minute, that was the first moment where the Springbok fans started celebrating. A brilliant, brilliant more from the 22, gained up to the 5 meters. They were right by the poles, and Fab de Klerk dabbed it in behind. The Kanye I'm tearing off to it, going over. Fafta Clerk also potentially injuring himself, so we have to monitor and see what that is about. Um, Damien Willemster replacing him with Pimpy in the 68th minute. And then another penalty in the 71st minute. Andre Pollard smacking it straight through. Sia Khaleesi then making way for Marco Van Staden. A really, really good outing for Sia Khaleesi. Um, Elliot Daly then competing the subs when he replaced Chris Harris in the 75th minute. By then, the game was pretty much won. But boom, 76th minute, another penalty for the box. Trevor Nyakani decimating the scrum. Him and Vincent Cock were really, really good off the bench. Um... Malcolm Moss also with a really important turnover. Pollard slotting in to make it 24-9. And then on the 80th minute, Pollard once again with a three-pointer. 27 points to nine. If we look at some of the stats of the game, 50% possession overall, which when you consider the first half was 40-60, shows you how much the Spring Mocks dominated the sort of last 15 to 20 minutes. Territory ended up being 49-51. In the first half, it was 61-39. So again, the Spring Mocks really coming into it. Scoring two tries, uh, five penalties to three. The Spring Mocks ran 138 meters compared to 112. The Lions actually had and um, beat more defenders and more clean breaks and more gain line carries, but they were sort of evening out. Offloads, four for the box, three for the Lions, six turnovers, one for the spring box. That was it, wasn't it? And we talked about the breakdown battle, but I think Vincent Koch got a breakdown battle. Um, when, uh, Malcolm marks the penalty. Quaker Smith was very good at the breakdown. Uh, I thought Sia Khaleesi was quite good at the breakdown as well. Stephen Kitsoff as well. We were really, really good at the breakdown where, where the spring box. 
And 44 kicks from hand, so still a lot of kicking, but the ball seemed to be sort of bouncing outside a little bit. Something I think that the Springboks still need to work out is is the is that is that I'm um, under the high ball. You weren't brilliant today, but I think equally the the, the British and Irish lines weren't that good under the high ball today. And I wonder if we might not see William Williams on the wing maybe next weekend. In terms of the defence, the Springboks made 118 of 131 tackles. The British and Irish lines made 94 of 101. Goal kick success rate was 75 percent each. Ruck success rate 100 percent for the Springboks, 92 percent for the British and Irish lines. Lineout success rate 83 to 73. The lineouts of the first half weren't great from from the Springboks. I think they lost their first two or two of the first three, but it got a lot better. For the British and Irish lines, it was pretty solid overall until the second half. They lost a uh, brilliant lineout when I think it was Lute Diaga, which was a really good moment. So they had 73 percent one scrums. The the, line, the South Africa lost one scrum. The Lions didn't win any, but South Africa definitely had the scrum dominance. Penalties conceded. By the end of it, the Springboks conceded 13 and the, the British and Irish Lions 19. And I reckon of those 19, probably about 10 of them came in that last sort of 20 minutes. Um, the yellow card apiece, just a brilliant, brilliant performance. In terms of individuals, Makazul Mapimpi made all his, he made five tackles, two turnovers, one by him. 15, didn't do much on the attack, um, but was so, so good um, in, the, in the defense. Sia Khaleesi, 14 tackles, one missed tackle, three carries. Uh, Franco Mostert, 13 tackles. France Herbert, 12 tackles. Ivan Etzebeth, you know, nine tackles. And Peace the toy before he um, came off was looking pretty solid. Um, I thought Jasper Visa had a decent game, 14 tackles from him. Not a single one missed, two turnovers, one as well. Um, Lacanio Am, another storming game from him. For the Lions, I thought Mari Tojo is once again very, very good. Uh, stats wise, didn't seem to do much, but he, he was quite, he kind of went missing a little bit in the second half, but was pretty good in the first half. Uh, thought Tom Carey got around there, made five tackles. Jack Conan was quite quiet by his standards, but was still sort of um, in an action. He made seven carries. Um, but it was just a game where the Springboks were better at the end of the day. The second half, they were just better. So, yeah, it all goes down to one game. So smash like on the video, subscribe to the channel. We will, of course, be live next week for it. So make sure you come and hang out. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steven. Smash like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys soon.